Hello, welcome to my video. What's going on? Everybody, I hope you're excited. Stephen Hawking to intro it. That's what it's all about. We're coming up with the earnings that you need to look at for the week of February 26th, 2024. You see it along the top. I can't really highlight it, but you see it along the top. You see the mouse. Oh, yeah, you see the mouse. So this is what we're looking at for the week. Really a, a full, full week of earnings. Not necessarily your big, big hitters like, uh, you know, the last couple weeks we had some, some of those major big old big old companies. Now we're getting into some large companies, but, uh, you know, we're a bit on the, the down slope of the earnings, let's say. Uh, so let's just talk about it. Really, there's only a couple companies I'm pretty interested in looking at here this week, but a lot of great companies nonetheless that probably are pretty relevant for a lot of you. So we'll just go over them um, and go from there, starting with Monday. Definitely, you know, I, I think a lot of people, especially, you know, maybe your Wall Street bettors among you, Betzers, betters. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I'd say that in that point. With Li Auto, really the first of the um, these Chinese EV companies to report for this earnings cycle. Curious to see what that has uh, in store for it. Obviously, if you know the Chinese EV space, <clears throat> first off, hard to say if you can trust the results they post because I don't know. Just curious about if they're actually being legitimate to regulators or not. I don't know. I don't know if they're posting the truth. Okay? I said it. Um, when you see these Chinese EV companies report, it is going to have a rippling effect on each of the Chinese EVs. That's just a darn fact. Um, yeah, I mean, so so this earnings is pretty important if you're a holder of something like NEO or um, Xpeng. There's others, I guarantee it, probably. Look, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know every company in the space. Sorry, buddy. Then we've got what some might consider one of the most boring companies of all time with the Domino's Pizza. It's a stock that I own um, because of its just consistency, right? Domino's Pizza is boring because it's some something that's so consistent. And it's not going anywhere, folks. It's Domino's Pizza. People are always going to be eating pizza. And there's nothing they can do to make people eat more pizza, make people eat less pizza. There's nothing that can be done. People are just going to eat pizza. That's just what it is. And I want some. I had some yesterday. Hopefully, can have some more today. Uh, then we've got Berkshire Hathaway, which... If you are in the know, and I hope you are, uh, Buffett came out, and they always do. It's it's actually already happened. Uh, Berkshire did when I'm recording this. I'm recording it on Sunday, believe it or not. It's been such a freaking hectic weekend. I've uh, been moving the whole weekend. Man. <clears throat> but anyways, Berkshire showing record levels of net income. Record levels. I mean, it's insane. Um, we're talking about three times what they had last in this quarter last year. It's kind of crazy. Uh, the company just absolutely printed out money this quarter, um, and it's going to be beneficial for the stock, obviously. You're going to see it going up uh, Monday here, no doubt. Then the Crystal, I'm not sure. Obviously, they've got a DNA strain there. I don't know what this company is. Not talking about methamphetamine, I presume, um, unless you're you know injecting the, the crystal into your into the the DNA. I don't know how that works. I, I, I've not been, I'm not privy to a procedure as such. Um, <clears throat> we've got Alpha. Okay. Now this is a name that just kind of sets me off, man. Alpha Metallurgical Met Metallurgical Metallurgical Resources. Really, really metallurgical. Come on now. We're just gonna make stuff up. That's nonsense. Then another thing that I don't even know, Itron sounds like it's an it's a robot. It's a bad robot from a movie. Is Itron? I don't know. Someone just made this up. Either that or like a reality TV show. They put a little robot there. Itron. I don't know. Itron. Probably Itron, huh? Now that you think about it, then we get F I S. Then we're followed that by Fresh Pet. Now, I'm actually shocked I didn't realize Fresh Pet was a just a publicly traded company. Um, reason being is 
all they do is make wet dog food, fresh dog food. It's wet dog food, let's be real, um, <clears throat> that you have to store in a fridge. And I'm very curious. I know their, their big initiative is that, um, you know, you're abusing your pets if you feed them kibble. And I, Really? If you feed them dry food, you're abusing them? I don't know about that, fresh pet. Uh, you also cost like eight times more per serving. So I don't know... I'm curious as to what these earnings actually look like. I mean, wh where's the market and how large is the market for this? Obviously, pets, it's a massive market. But is something like this, uh, it's not really in the cards for a lot of people, right? It's not necessarily affordable, especially in this economy. So I'm curious to see what they do. I, I just, you know, I don't know. Um, that's just me being an idiot. Pilgrims, chicken products, also incredibly boring. And then followed by Surgery Partners. It's a good, look, that's just a basic name. What's wrong with those names, man? Uh, after Metallurgical, get out of here. Whoa, what the heck? Just dinged. Um, ding, ding, ding. Uh, after Close, we've got Unity, the uh, game engine after them. I wonder if they do more. I actually haven't looked enough into the company. I know, obviously, they've got the... Um, uh, you know, Unity Engine, but I, I don't know, don't know what else they do. I'm kind of curious. I should look into it. Zoom is, is actually one I kind of wanted to talk about for a little bit. And that's just because, man, I, I look at this stock and you look at like the price action here and I'll bring it up, bring up the chart here. Um, you know, and I, I bring it up because in 2020, when we saw this massive boom of, you know, 600%, and a subsequent decline of, <laughs> let's see, uh, get there, get there. From that high, it's down 88%. And you know some people bought it at that high. You know they did. Um, <clears throat> so obviously it's been trading now at this very, very low valuation for really a full year. I mean, even over the last year, it's gone down another 14% because they're garbage. Um, but then you know what? what? Oh, that was... <laughs> Of course, Kathy. That's that's an article here. Kathy Woods bought more more Zoom in March of last year. Are you are you is she dumb? Yeah, she's she's pretty bad. Look, you're trying to be trendy. Zoom is a stock. I'm telling you right now, it's a stock that's dead in the water. You look at expectations for Zoom. They're only expected to grow revenue by one percent. They're expected to decrease in terms of EPS. And they're already trading at a P.E. ratio of 153, a $19 billion market cap. That's a price to sales of about, uh, for them, it's about, let's see, for the full year, I think they're expected $4 billion. So let's just say it's, you know, it's about six, five and a half. I guess just five when you think about it. I just keep decreasing that, which isn't crazy. But again, there's no reason that it warrants that multiple. They're not growing they're not growing the, the, the top line revenue. They're not growing the bottom line. The EPS isn't growing. They're not growing net income. It's a stock that's dead in the water. And this price where it's at right now, I would argue it's overvalued. Look, some may argue against that. I think it's overvalued where it's at right now. But if anything, I don't think it's worth being any higher than this. I'll tell you that right now. If anything, you can make an argument for being fair valued. They are showing nothing as a company that warrants them Doing any I, look, they get beat out every day by Microsoft Teams. Every single day, they get beat out by them. Zoom, it's it's just the platform's not nearly as good. Um, yeah, that's that's what I got to say about Zoom. Okay, <clears throat> I didn't mean to go off like that, but I just did. We've got Workday. More and more companies just switching over to um, Workday as a means for their really their you know, benefit for their HR team to make things automated, make them quote unquote easier, less paper. Um, <clears throat> you know, curious to see that. Now hims, hers, I, I think that's an underwear company. I really do. I think it's an underwear company. Um, but I don't want to Google it in case it is. Cause that, you know, I'll get banned, man. I just get banned. Uh, one. Okay. Or Oniac. I, I don't know what sounds better there, but they all sound pretty bad. Um, terrible company name. We've got a piece of trash company following them, an iRobot. Why do I say piece of trash? Look, Amazon has pulled the deal 
they're not going to purchase them. The stock has fallen now 50 plus percent after this news. And you want to know why? Because the company kind of just sucks. It sucks. They, they're they not growing revenue. They're not growing. Uh, they're already a negative earner. They don't make positive earnings. Uh, I was bought into the stock hoping that maybe they would one day and hoping that someone would buy them out. And I got that hope. It came true. And then they pulled the rug. The EU regulators made Amazon pull the freaking rug for me because they refuse to let an American company succeed. They refuse. It's very upsetting. Very upsetting. In what world would Amazon owning a robot vacuum company benefit them? Why would it make them a monopoly? A robot vacuum company that makes less than $1 billion in revenue. How would it benefit them? Tell me that, regulators. I'm going to smack them. Chancellor, Chancellor, Chancellor Merkel, I'm going to smack you. That's what I meant to say. Um, it's a garbage company. I don't know what they can do in earnings to really make the stock go up. It's just there's not much they could do. The stock just stinks. Car gurus after them. Uh, company sucks. Uh, SBA, I uh, don't have a clue what this is, but they got a little, little sound thing here. I don't know. It's hard to say. Everbridge and then Heiko, not Geico. There's no gecko here. Tuesday before open. The Norwegian Cruise Lines. Um, uh, not much to say. I don't know. Cruise Lines showed good news. I mean, they showed good news, good demand. Uh, obviously, prices have increased for them, but people are still buying them mugs. So, uh, yeah, good for them. AutoZone following them. Also incredibly boring. Never trust AutoZone ever. I would never, never go there. Um, one of those places like Dobbs, you go in there for one thing. Um, you Let's be real. You go in there because you wanted them to air up your tire, and you know what they're going to do. Uh, we recommend a whole set of new, all four tires. We also recommend we change the transmission. Actually, the engine exploded while we had the car. We were just adding air to the tire, but for some reason, the engine exploded. We're going to need a whole new engine. That's what they do. That's what those car companies always do. These freaking, uh, screw them. Lowe's following them. We caught a sneak peek from Home Depot. Usually you see similar performance here. Lowe's has been a do doing a little bit about performing over Home Depot, actually, over the last couple of years. Um, <clears throat> curious if that continues in terms of um, just from a revenue standpoint. We'll see what happens. So that's Lowe's. Nothing crazy. Love that it's you know shaped like a house. It's a good, it's a good logo. It's shaped like a like a Lowe's store. Um, I respect what they're doing with the logo game. It's basic. It's clean. Uh, Lending Tree following them. I don't know, man. The rates rates going like crazy. Still going up. Probably beneficial for these companies. They're probably originating less loans though. So that's something to consider. American Electric Power. Boring name, but man, it gets the job done. Much better than metallurgical. That's what I'll tell you. Shift four payments. Never heard of them once in my life. Let's just be real. The Cracker Barrel. We can't say that word here anymore, unfortunately. We're going to call this the Caucasian Barrel. That's what we're going to say from now on. We can't say that word. Maybe with a soft A, though. Cracker Barrel. We could maybe say that. Um, but not, not the way it's spelled right now, unfortunately. It's weird that Cracker Barrel is just a, its own publicly traded company. I don't know, something about it. It just doesn't seem like it would be. Um, pretty good food, actually. I went there for the first time probably in this quarter. I actually benefited this quarter for them, believe it or not, uh, with a 10, it was probably an $11 entree, uh, buffalo chicken mac and cheese. Pretty good. I'll give Cracker Barrel some credit, um. Yeah. American Tower. Uh, Macy's. This one is shocking to me. I'm curious what they say because obviously this in this quarter, Macy's got a uh, got got a buyout bid um, for, you know, $20 billion. Someone was looking to buy the company. And they just recently declined it over the last, I think it was... I think it was like two, three weeks ago at this point, they declined the offer. Macy's did. This is a company that I thought was going bankrupt. 
and they had an offer for billions, twenty tens of billions of dollars on the table, and they declined it? I want to know what they have to say about this. Obviously, at the earnings, they will bring it up. Uh, probably talk about the reasons in which they did. You'd think it means good news for them, right? If they, they think they can do better than that offer. I just don't know, man. I thought this company was going to be going bankrupt the way of Sears and, and the like, man. It's the same type of company. Um, yeah, I don't know. Scotia Bank, maybe because there's less competition with Sears gone, and a lot of these companies in the mall is gone. Maybe, maybe there is. I don't know. Scotia Bank following them. Um, I don't know. Not much to say about Scotia Bank. Let's be real. Uh, Devon, uh, it's an energy company. Even though it just said Devon, I should put the word energy next to it. Just so you know, uh, really not a lot to say about them either. Can't lie to you. First Solar, uh, not a lot to say about them. Believe it or not. <laughs> Kava. Now, I actually didn't have a clue what Kava was until they IPO'd. Uh, it was probably four or five months ago at this point. Uh, well, I guess probably closer to six. So I guess this is like their second earnings report as a public publicly traded company. Um, the stock shot up massively at IPO. I know that because I had to take many a call about Kava's IPO. Didn't know what they did. I guess, you know, Mediterranean food, similar to a Chipotle style almost. I don't know. We don't have any around us, so I don't know what Kava does, okay? I don't know what it tastes like. It's got to be good, apparently. The demand's very positive. Um, yeah. Then we get, look, this is a good logo. Rocket Lab. You can barely see it, but man, that's a good logo. It's a rocket ship, but the word Rocket Lab's built into it. A big flame behind it. I kind of like it. Okay, I like them. Array Technologies, Axon, Beyond Meat. You know, every time this company comes up, I've got a bone to pick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up. I just want to know Beyond Meat. Uh, let's just look at the stock for now. I want to know what they're doing. Well, not a shocker. I've told everyone from the start here, this company is absolute trash. It's absolute trash. I've said it from the start, and I will continue to say it. I said it about Tattooed Chef as well. It's not good. The demand isn't there. There's not enough. There's not enough demand in this type of market for your meat alternatives. It's not. There's just a. There is a small subset of people that will be buying this because it's what they either have to do. You know, diet wise, dietarily. Is that what I wanted to say? I don't know if that's a word. Or. They do it just as a lifestyle choice, but it's a very limited number. It's not really growing by a massive amount. So that's why you see the stock has gone from $250, roughly, $230. Anyways, you've seen it fall in the last four years, 96%. This stock's a hunk of junk. They don't make revenue, and it's a company that's going to be bankrupt. It's going to be bankrupt. Um Sorry about that. Just wanted to type that in. And again, look, I tell you, it's a company that's going to be bankrupt. $75 million in revenue, down 8% year over year last report. Down again, the last report in June. Down again. This They've had a full year of declining revenue by high double digits. The company's terrible. It's terrible. And the net income's not good either. They're losing money. They're losing money. The company is going to be bankrupt within the next three years. I'm just telling you right now, folks. I would not buy this piece of garbage. Um, I got a bone to pick up. It's not, it's not a profitable business. It's never going to be. No one's buying the products. They suck. They suck. Um, then we have lemonade. Sounds like a delicious beverage. It's not, folks. Well, it is a delicious beverage. This company doesn't produce that beverage, though. So it's an artificial intelligence company. Um I don't have a lot to say about them, though, because I don't follow the business well enough. Splunk, another one of these big tech companies. Then we've got the Virgin Galactic company, absolutely overhyped, talking about bringing us humans into space. Let us see the, see the world with space flights, just slightly leaving um, the atmosphere to where you can see the crest of the Earth to see that the Earth, believe it or not, it's not flat. I don't know. It's it's shocking to a lot of people. It's not. Um, just not an affordable, ever going to be an affordable thing for us average 
people. So Virgin Galactic, it's it's a tiny, tiny upside in my opinion. Um, Wednesday before open, we got Baidu, Novavax. Here, a lot of great things about Novavax on the upside there for sure. Um, <clears throat> don't follow enough advanced auto parts. Fu, just like AutoZone. I'm not messing with you. Um, I can already. What the heck is that? Oh, it's it's. It's it's Icon Enterprises, man. You got Berkshire report over the weekend. Now Carl Icon gets to um, gets to get his licks in. You'd assume, you know, hopefully he did pretty good. One of the best investors of all time. Uh, we'll see what he's able to post as well. Buffett posted a ridiculous. Well, really, Buffett doesn't do much of it anymore. It's all his assistants. But anyways, um, TJX Corporation. We're talking about TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods. They got it all. I actually expect a pretty good quarter here from him. Um, I went into a, a TJ Maxx not too long ago, um, like maybe a month ago, and this thing was absolutely packed beyond belief on a Saturday. The line was halfway through the store. Very impressive. I think they're going to be putting up good numbers, no doubt. And the company just historically has performed very well with those three main, you know, main companies under its brand. Uh, I guess they have TK Maxx as well in, in the UK. TK, well, come on now, just call it TK. Why are you calling it TK Maxx? Get out of here, buddy. Uh, Viatris, ACM Research, Fulgent, terrible name, by the way, TG Therapeutics, and then MCOR. Uh, come on now, we're getting we're getting stupid. Uh, but after close, uh, we got Marathon Digital Holdings. There's like 50 companies named Marathon. There really are. It's It's shocking. Uh, how many companies are named Marathon? They don't know how that's possible, but they just added a digital holding, so they, they're allowed to legally. Snowflake, man, this is a big, big tech week, but not big tech, if you know what I'm saying. It's a big week for tech companies, especially those in the artificial intelligence game, but not a big tech week. Confusing? I think so. Um, yeah, we'll see what they're able to do. Obviously, all these companies have really, you know, they all benefited from that boom in 2020, and since then have not done great. Um, but then we have Salesforce after them. Actually, one I'm interested in, and main reason being it's a company I see definitely a lot of upside in. I look at Salesforce, and man, you know, the thing's already up 80% just in the last year alone. It's seen a lot of that upside P ratio over 100. But... You know, I look at what the company's able to do, and here's why I like Salesforce really at this point. It's a company that's so high margin, and the just the potential there is 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 insane. The potential for net income is is already being realized, as you see. You know, year over year, expected to grow by about you know sixty seventy percent in terms of um, you know EPS and net income, and then the next year even expected to grow further. I think there's a lot of potential, and we're talking about you know, double digit growth, it's low double digit, but it's still there. I think there's a lot of upside for Salesforce as companies start utilizing their services, and especially in the artificial intelligence game. I think there's a lot they can do. Um, you're looking for kind of a growth type company. It's hard to say buy it at this point, you know, obviously, you'd much rather have bought it at 196 back in October. Um, but maybe look for a pullback. Uh, and see what you can do here. Obviously, over the last five years, hasn't done much more than it's done last year alone. So you should have bought it in December of 23, I'll tell you that. But I know I didn't. Wish I did. So maybe wait for a pullback if you get one. Um, a lot of upside here on that stock, though. There really is. AMC following them is AMC Theaters. Um, Mimi, it's not good. Uh, I don't know what to say about AMC Theaters, man. I went to one, and we took the upper level. And there was a piece of glass halfway through the screen, like literally like a barrier halfway through the screen made of glass. And you just had a, it was the most frustrating thing. You couldn't sit back in the chair. You had to stand up to not have the glass in your view. It's terrible design. AMC is a piece of garbage. We never go to AMC for that reason. I hate them. C3 AI, another one, man. Tech week. Paramount, it's the worst app that's ever existed, Paramount Plus. Um, I don't know who's going to be adding their subscription to this, maybe do a free plan. Look, Paramount's app is terrible. You try using it mobile, and I know you probably have experienced it if you own it. 
whenever it goes to an ad break, yes, I'm too poor to have the ad free version. Uh, more like I don't watch it enough. Um, whenever you go to an ad break, it skips back, or I guess it doesn't skip back. It pulls back to the last ad break. So you could be 10 minutes into the show, and it's going to pull you back to three minutes into the show for the last ad break. It's terrible, and you have to skip forward again. It's the most, why can't we fix that? Why is that a thing? I don't know. It does it on the TV, too. I'm pretty sure I've seen it happen on the TV. Okta, the nose is getting stuffy. Uh, Ionic, Ion Q, Ion Q. That's uh, I ter- terrible. This WW's Weight Watchers, as a man who's, uh, you know, father-to-be, let me tell you, the dad bot comes in quick, could consider Weight Watchers. I am curious what the relationship between, like, how Weight Watchers is doing and with Ozempic being so big now. Um I'm, I'm curious as to, like, how much that's impacted their business. I would assume it certainly has because they've got weight loss drugs out there that <clears throat> exist and you don't necessarily need, and they're hyper effective. You don't necessarily have to eat, you know, trash. Uh, look, it's not trash, but it's the opposite of trash. I guess healthy, but it tastes like trash, okay? Um, you don't have to do that when you could just take drugs now in the modern age, kind of wild, Black Mirror-esque. Uh, Duolingo following them. I feel like I see a lot of Duolingo. They're like memeing on TikTok or something, man. Uh, on social media, they're memeing. They're trying to pull a Wendy's, I think, um, and roast people, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what they do. I mean, if I had to imagine, it's a company that... I, I always assumed Duolingo was like a. they taught you languages. Let me see. A Rosetta Stone-esque. What does it do? It is. It is. Look at this freaking owl fudge, dude. Look at this owl fudge, man. I smack him in the face. I smack this dude in the face. Screw him. Yeah, I was right. I knew what it was, but um, here's how much they charge. Anyways, we're getting too crazy. After that, Thursday, we're talking about Celsius. Celsius Holdings, as they are known. Um, They make the energy beverage known as Celsius. It's a pretty good... Decent drink. I've had I've had a, several of the flavors. Pretty tasty. Um, loaded with caffeine, obviously. Um, pretty decent, though. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give them credit. It's a decent taste. I don't know what kind of chemicals are in there because they're all zero sugar, but hey, uh, that's all energy drinks, I suppose. The stock's gone crazy, though, for sure, recently because they've been a very trendy company. The stock's gone crazy. Curious if they're able to keep up the momentum. Canadian Natural. Ah, screw Canada, man. Melco. Best Buy, another company I'm shocked still exists. There's been so many that have closed because they're just, it's not a relevant store, really. Uh, Best Buy isn't. It's just not. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how they're still around. Kronos Group, a little little puff, puff, pass. Uh, Terrible stock. Never invest in these companies. I told you from the start, never invest in in these Mary Jane companies. Don't do it. Don't do it. They're terrible. Birkenstocks. Why, why is that a thing? Polestar. Uh, they make vehicles. I don't I feel like they don't make more than a couple, like one model, I feel like. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, and I've never seen any of them in the wild. I've never seen anyone have a Polestar. I've never seen it. Um, AB InBev spent a lot on advertising over the Super Bowl kind of as a redemption story um, for, you know, uh, failed ad con- c- uh, campaigns in the past, you know, but like, good grief. So we'll see. I don't know. Obviously, the boycott worked on them. You know, people boycotted after that ad. I'm curious if that's kind of done. I don't know. Um, I think they admitted they made a mistake, and uh, maybe people will buy back. I don't know. Uh, Bath and Body Works following them. Ah, it's boring. Bath and Body Works is boring, but it's going to be a consistent company that's going nowhere. I got to be honest. Six Flags. Doesn't feel like a big quarter for Six Flags. I don't know what they do in the winter time, actually, when the parks aren't open. So I don't know. This nose needs to be cleared, and I'm not gonna blow it into the microphone, but I might. I might. <laughs> I might consider it. Uh, after close the Caller, Soundhound. This was shocking to me when I saw this too. I didn't realize Soundhound was publicly traded. I don't. I, I always knew them as just a company that recognized like music. You know, it's like a. Uh, what's that other one called? I, I can't think of the name of the other one, but it basically, you know, you're like, hey, you're in a store and you hear a song, you're like, what the heck's that song? Um, 
and then you open up SoundHound or whatever the other one was, and it tells you what the song is. Apparently, it does more than that. There's something about voice recognition, and I, I don't know. I'm not sure what else it does. Maybe it picks up, like, it tells you what a TV show is or something. I don't know. It's SoundHound. I don't, it's just wild to me that's a publicly traded company. Um, Fisker. I love me a nice set of Fiskers, baby. They make good tools. They really do. Dell. Um, boring as well, man. I don't know. PCs did not do well during this quarter. They haven't over the last year um, at all. Ginkgo Bioworks. Hate, hate them. Autodesk. You know, I use that all all the time when I'm designing my new house. I'm designing it in, in Autodesk, no doubt. Um, Green Brick Partners. Terrible name. Voice is cracking. My nose is so stuffed, man. Hewlett Packard Enterprises again. Computers not doing great here, okay. Um, printers, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Viva, I like Velveeta. Maybe not Viva all that much. And then Elastic, another one of these bank AI companies, man. Um, big week for them. Big week if you're invested in this. Probably gonna see a lot of price movements up or down, five plus percent this week. So <clears throat> then before open Friday plug. We got Fubo TV. I don't know who actually uses Fubo TV. I know they've got live sports on there. I don't know what all they have in terms of live sports, but again, this is an example of cable being kind of better than streaming at this point. Streaming is effed us, man. We're off of cable, and now we basically just have cable again. We've got a live, you know, someone's got a live TV one for $70 a month. Then we've got five other services for $10 a month each. We're paying more than we did for cable, guys. Why aren't we seeing this? Someone's got to call this out. Um, Tidewater, Rapid Micro, Radnet. What are these companies? Atlantica, Sustainable Infrastructure, garbage. Intest Corporation, and then Amneal to end it. Good grief, guys. This is garbage. Anyways, it's going to be a big week. Hope you're excited. Bye. Bye. <laughs>